The 2021-2022 Boston Celtics ended their season with their head held high. Despite falling short in the NBA Finals, fans can take solace in the fact that they were defeated by a team who has reached the top multiple times in the Golden State Warriors, led by the greatest shooter of all time and the future Hall of Famer Stephen Curry, who also took home his first Finals MVP. The Finals were exhilarating, to say the least, as we got to see the Celtics, led by first-time All-NBA First Team selection Jason Tatum, who finally exercised their Eastern Conference Finals demons go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Curry and the Dubs, who quickly retooled after placing dead last in the Western Conference two years prior. When the Celtics won Game 1 in shocking fashion, a lot of people changed their predictions on the outcome of the series, and Boston was even heavily favored before Game 4 began. But this was not the case all year long. The Celtics' finals appearance came as a surprise to most people, considering they were sporting a 16-19 record in late December. Nevertheless, the Celtics stuck together, employed a defense-first approach, and ran through the league, finishing with a 51-31 record, good for second in the East. That late turnaround was spearheaded by first-time head coach Ime Odoka, who employed a defense-first approach, which paved the way to the Celtics' first finals appearance since 2010. However, Boston's seemingly concrete road to getting back to the finals and winning Banner 18 has gotten off to a rocky start when on September 22nd, famed NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN Sports reported that Odoka faced possible disciplinary action and significant suspension for a violation of organizational guidelines. Since then, while reports have been shaky to say the least, more details have emerged regarding what actually happened with Odoka and the Celtics. The most recent one came via Wojnarowski again, who reported that a law firm investigation revealed that Odoka used crude language with a female subordinate prior to starting an improper workplace relationship with her. While reliable sources have been scarce in the face of this incident, a lot of people with inside knowledge have left crumbs of information that will help unfold and understand the entirety and severity of the Ime Oduga situation. Before we start exploring everything, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want more interesting NBA analysis such as this one. With that, let's explore what really happened with Ime Oduga and the Boston Celtics. First off, let's start with the timeline. When Wojnarowski's September 22 tweet began exploding in basketball circles, information about what Odoka did to warrant a suspension and, more importantly, how long that suspension would be was extremely limited. As we know, in the current state of sports discourse, particularly with the advent of NBA Twitter, reactions are made blisteringly fast and the tweet from Wojnarowski was met with a ton of confusion. With fans speculating on what the Celtics coach did, that was 10.35 a.m. Less than an hour later, at 11.33 a.m., Wojnarowski followed up with a tweet regarding Udoka's job security. Ime Udoka's job isn't believed to be in jeopardy, but a suspension is looming, which essentially still does not tell anything about what he did. Sure, an additional nugget of detail was shared, but still, this is tantamount to nothing in terms of actual breaking news. Then, a few minutes before 1 p.m. the same day, Shams Charania, lead NBA insider for The Athletic and Wojnarowski's nemesis when it comes to NBA scoops, dropped a bombshell of a tweet, saying that Udoka had an impression proper intimate and consensual relationship with a female member of the team staff. That tweet from Shams set the NBA world ablaze, and immediate reactions were heavily varied. A lot of people were in Adoka's corner, saying that they were surprised to see that what he did warranted a suspension, even more so a whole season's worth. It's, I think it's super awkward for everyone. For the whole season! Like, we didn't just lose, and now you want to... I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm so sorry. What the heck? Those defending the Celtics head coach were quick to point out that Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver, who was documented to have participated in repeated incidents of inappropriate behavior, was fined $10 million and suspended by an NBA league office for one year. From both the NBA and WNBA, infamous sports personality Stephen A. Smith stepped into Odoka's defense as well, saying that, What I will say is this, and this is a message to the Boston Celtics, I got a problem with you as an organization. If you're not going to fire him, why the hell do we even know about this story? He said, Nobody's bringing that up. I'm going to bring it up. What the hell are you telling us for? 
Smith said, For those in Ime Odoka's camp, because of the precedent set by the sanctions against Sarver, the punishment does not fit the crime. On the other hand, others also recognize that Odoka was clearly in the wrong here, and Sarver got disciplined by the NBA itself, whereas Odoka got his penalty from the Boston Celtics organization as he broke organizational rules. Over the next few days, more and more people with inside knowledge of the situation have come out and given their responses, including the Celtics organization themselves, who held a press conference in an attempt to get ahead of any speculation that had impacted the team, its players, and more importantly, its staff. Team Governor Wick Grousback and President of Basketball Operations Brad Stevens hosted the press conference, answering questions but were unable to divulge much about what actually went down stating that they did so for privacy reasons for the people involved. Brad Stevens also mentioned that a lot of people were dragged unfairly into the situation referring to online speculation, particularly on Twitter, about who the mystery woman is. Former NBA player and now ESPN analyst Matt Barnes also voiced his opinions on the scandal. At first, he originally came to Adoka's defense when, after learning of the Celtics' decision to suspend their head coach for one season, called it terrible. He then said he played in the league for a long time. Anyone who played in the league can tell you, this is a very common situation. This is not news for people who have been in the league or even around organizations. However, a day later, Barnes backtracked and clarified his response a day prior. Last night, without knowing all the facts, I spoke on Ime Odokaz's defense, and after finding out the facts after I spoke, I erased what I posted because this situation in Boston is deep. It's messy. It's 100 times uglier than any of us thought, Barnes said. Barnes' stance has since been unchanged. And on a recent interview with Vlad TV, a few days later, he even suggested that Odoka would be lucky to ever coach in the NBA again. Again. Oh, he's a great coach, man, Barnes said, referring to the Celtics head coach leading the team to the NBA Finals in his rookie year in charge. Boston will figure out a way, but you know, if everything comes out, he'll be lucky if he coaches the NBA again, to be honest with you. I think it's pretty heavy, man. It's just some stuff you can't do. Not judging. To each his own. I've made plenty of mistakes, but if everything comes out, it could get extra hot in the kitchen for him. The severity of Odoka's actions still cannot be accurately determined, but Barnes' statement certainly sheds a light on the potential implications. Wojnarowski's latest report suggested that if Odoka wishes, Boston would allow him to pursue a coaching gig with other teams. Furthermore, rival teams have also inquired about the baseline of the situation, trying to gather as much information as they can in order to have a better picture of what happened with Odoka and the Celtics before trying to employ his services. However, with the limited availability of the information, and even the Celtics themselves still trying to figure out what to do, those teams wouldn't have much to go on. Odoka has since addressed the issue, saying, I want to apologize to our players, fans, the entire Celtics organization, and my family for letting them down. I am sorry for putting the team in this difficult situation, and I accept the team's decision. Out of respect for everyone involved, I will have no further comment. But this limited response only added to the haziness of the situation. Looking ahead, the Celtics started their preseason with a bang, dominating the Charlotte Hornets 134-93. The Celtics, under Joe Mazzulla's helm in his debut as a head coach, collected an absurd 41 assists on 48 made field goals. The Celtics also made a ridiculous 22 out of 47 three-pointers and looked to be in prime form for their next season. Just how big really Udoka's impact was is a question for another time, but for now, it looks like they'll just be fine.